All right, here we go. It's time for the squad again. We've got Oregon, the number one team in the country. That's right. The number one team in the country is from the Big Ten. Indiana is 7-0. We'll get to that in a moment. Ohio State, Penn State, back from buys. The Big Ten race is on. Let's talk. It's time for the Big Ten squad. You're talking ball with the Big Ten squad. From USC to Ohio State, from Michigan to Oregon, from Nebraska to Washington, it's the local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network bringing you scoops, breakdowns, and the most comprehensive preview of the upcoming Big Ten weekend. No hurt feelings and thin skin allowed. Squad up. You're part of the Big Ten squad. I don't know about no hurt feelings, but welcome to the Lockdown Big Ten squad. Sit back and enjoy it as we talk some football. I'm Craig Shima, the host of Lockdown Big Ten. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 of bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com and get started. In round one, Sonny checking in from Locked In Illini. Big game against the Oregon Ducks. Spencer is a regular as well. Locked On Ducks, Locked On College Football, Locked He's everything. Just on all of them. Where, where's your duck pillow? I was, you were holding up, cracking me up when we were oh, off there. Yes. Oh, I was okay with him kind of Everyone's Nobody favorite pillow. Look at this. Nobody look at that logo. Nobody yeah, isn't it good? Oh, isn't good. it good? Oh. Sonny, look at it. Look at it, Sonny. Look at it, Sonny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got uh, Zach from Locked On UCLA, Roman from Locked On Huskies, and Jay Stevens from Locked On Buckeyes. All right. I, I Again, I hate to do this two weeks in a row but spencer let's you're number one so <laughs> yeah let's, we're with you that nice job got the number one ranking uh no no letdown if you will short week road game purdue after the ohio state win so business as usual yeah, it was a, it was a very comforting performance for Oregon fans in West Lafayette. And with regards to Oregon being ranked number one, Dan Lanning had a great response when asked about it by my guy, Jared Mack, over at 24-7. He smiled and softly said, who cares? <laughs> and I think that excited the Oregon fan base even more than being the number one team in all the land. But... Yeah, I don't know how you could argue Oregon shouldn't be the number one team after Texas lost last week to Georgia. Of course, there were two voters who felt otherwise. The SEC bias knows absolutely no bounds, but that is okay. And I think Oregon played like the number one team last week. They'll get a a better challenge from Illinois this week. But yeah, it's a great time to be an obnoxious Duck fan on Twitter right now. All right. And then I would argue that this would be uh, your your hardest remaining game, Illinois, a ranked team, a team that's beaten uh, beaten three ranked teams so far. Sonny, I got to tell you, I loved the leather helmets this past week. Oh, so good. Oh, so good. So, so did I. I mean, those were two years in the making. Brett Bielema and Josh Whitman have been working with Nike for two years to make that event happen. And Nike? You what? Watch this game on CBS. The whole presentation was fantastic. The uniforms are great. Champagne itself was on fire, and uh, we had a victory to celebrate it at the end, which was nice. Is there a more timely game for you guys after unveiling cool Nike-led uniforms <laughs> than going to Oregon this week? Well, it's, it's easy that... to return them now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just put them in the truck and leave them in the warehouse. Well, uh, just quick thoughts on that game. I mean, it's it's a, a big game, I think, both for both schools. Like, it was, we pay a lot of attention to – Oregon at the top and Ohio State and Penn State and even teams that are struggling at Michigan and the Trojans get a lot of suck a lot of oxygen out of the room. You know, Brett Bielema, sneaky six and one. I say sneaky. The three ranked wins are pretty good, but he's he's right there. This is a big game for them. Yeah, I mean, Illinois dominated the trenches. Uh, They dominated the run game, and they had a quarterback who threw for only 80 yards, exactly how you would have scripted winning that game against Michigan. Yeah, Uh, nothing really made sense, you know, especially with the second half we had the week before against Purdue, where a lot of Illini fans were just panicking about how Michigan would uh, out physical Illinois and run all over them. And Brett Bielema and squad responded with arguably their best defensive line and offensive line game of the year. And, you know, a 21 seven game, which honestly, the score is closer than the game actually was. Illinois had that game pretty handedly the entire game. Uh, Zach, congratulations to the Bruins. We Yay. Win you got more than Hooray. 20 points in the game. The floor is yours. Uh, I mean, the only receipts I can pull back was all the people who said Purdue would get that first win in Big Ten play. <laughs> Don't look now. UCLA, USC tied in the Big Ten standings. <laughs> they scored 20 That's points the and a half. And to all the people who thought Justin Martin should start, 
Ethan Garber has played fantastic, but it's Rutgers, so I don't know what to think about other than that. Well, hey, guys, some people in this chat would agree that Rutgers is a tough place to play and win a football right. game. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, well, you guys got the win, so take the week off. R- rest up a little bit, right? They're 2-0 and before the bye, right? Aren't great coaches supposed to win after the bye? Deshaun yeah. Foster, 2-0 and before the bye. <laughs> That's good. All right, Roman, locked on Huskies. Uh, you got a big game against the Hoosiers this weekend, 7-0 and Indiana. They don't have their starting quarterback. What are your thoughts on this game? Yeah, I'm, I'm super interested to see what that looks like. Where I know Taven Jackson came in, he did a really good job against Nebraska. Obviously, we all saw how that game went. Washington got a nice dub against the bye week. It's, it's, it's wonderful to see that. <laughs> the win in the bye week, it's it's you know always wonderful to find just any wins he possibly can. Washington's getting a little bit healthier. Jed Fish talked about Jonah Coleman being a little bit bruised up and seeing him back to 100%. I'm, I'm really interested to see. That's the biggest thing I'm watching this game. Indiana hasn't trailed all year long. You know, Jacob going nowhere to be found right now. So I can say this. I, I, I really like what Washington's offense can do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to Brandon for, for getting oh, Jacob. Just in throw here. him into the fold. Yeah, okay, okay. Jacob can leave. All right. Hold, okay. I didn't even finish my point. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> See, you just sit around and you wait for your opportunity. I'm sorry. <laughs> Number 13, seven and zero. Oh, backup quarterback doesn't matter we're coming roman you just can't stop the train of kurt signetti and the boys has anybody noticed that Jacob's I can graphics <laughs> <laughs> how much information are you jamming on your locked on who's your graphics are number 13 Too much. he's got it all right there uh, i just got to put curtis rourke heisman trophy and then big 10 champs we'll just keep running with that so oh, wow right. Wow. Well, <laughs> Jacob, as long as you're here, what, I mean, so good news, bad news. Uh, Look at how we just didn't let Roman finish the thought. That's I, how much respect I, I, this I, I conference has for Washington. <laughs> <laughs> this conference is so over the new teams because Oregon's doing things like me putting a pillow with a duck literally in your face. USC, UCLA, and Washington aren't adding to the league's RPI. And this conference has decided, you know what? Screw you guys. We don't even want to let you talk. Hey, hold on. Yeah, hold on. Don't, don't knock the other three Pac-12 schools. Uh, schools. By the way, if you want to see somebody do that, check out Lockdown Big Ten from Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Not the selfless plug. I so respect it. Um, no, I think Indiana, look, out, Roman, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish up. You may as well talk Thank about you. your team because there won't be much to talk about come, I don't know, Saturday afternoon. I, I hope we can clip that one in case things go a different way. Uh, shout out Michael Penix, by the way, backing Washington in this game. But uh, I no, really, the, the one thing I, I'm most interested in is, as we know, Jacob, your, your Hoosiers have not trailed all season long. And yep. if Washington can run the ball effectively, I like that matchup. I've been so impressed with Jonah Coleman all year long. And if Jed Fish can find a way to improve on some play calling issues, especially in the red zone, which was has been such a big issue all season long, I think Washington has a shot. Obviously, our friends at FanDuel feel that Indiana is, you know, favored by six, and I get it. I'm not arguing that point at all. But I'm just saying I like the talent that Washington has. And coming off a of bye week, I, I like their chances. Roman, I have, I, have, I have a question for you. True or false, I Washington don't, don't, would be a better football team if they called more speed options in the red zone. False. Mm, uh, right. what Washington would be a better team was if they could score more than 50% touchdowns in the red zone. They're 14 to 28 in that metric this year. Now, I have never seen a Big Ten show anywhere, podcast, TV, or anything, where the Ohio State guy has to wait nine minutes to get some airtime. <laughs> Jay, come on, man. Let's. Uh, we got I'm, not, I'm not mad about it. I'm, I'm enjoying the chaos and Jacob popping in and Spencer's nonsense, nonsense he's spewing every now and then. Like, I'm just sitting back, taking it all in. And- 32 31. Sorry. Amen. It happens. Bless you. But thank you. <laughs> you do have a game that I thought looked pretty sexy on the schedule two weeks ago, Nebraska. But now after I saw what happened at Indiana, I don't know what's going to happen to them uh, at uh, at Ohio State. How are you looking at this game? I'm watching certain things with injuries, but I do think Nebraska's going to going to lose. It's also Ohio State's homecoming, and that's just a game you get ramped up for. But coming off of that Oregon loss and then the bye week. Ohio State better win the battle in the trenches this weekend because if they don't, Ryan Day might pull his hair out. He challenged the guys on defense about, hey, why aren't we getting sacks? Or challenged the defensive coaches about why are certain things happening in big games when our players are better than what we're coaching them to be. So I do think this game is going to be pretty out of hand pretty early. 
I'm not even going to be a guy that's going to say like, oh, Ohio State will match IU score from the from this past weekend. Like, I wouldn't I do that either. I don't really care. Like, I don't care at all. I just want to see improvement. All I want to see yeah. is a team playing better, a better defense, offense that can run the ball in the second half. Spencer, that still pisses me off that you guys basically <laughs> shut down Ohio State's run game in the second half, made it one-dimensional, and we know the result of the game. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we're looking forward to it. We're just kind of warming up here. I usually tease what's coming up next to keep people listening. I have no idea which one of these guys are remaining with me. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned and find out as we jumble the Brady Bunch screen here. Uh, all that's coming up in one minute here on Lockdown Big Ten. The squad continues. Hey, football fans, NFL fans, games get a lot more exciting. If you got a little action on them here, you can check it out. With uh, FanDuel, FanDuel, big returns on NFL games of America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play by play and a whole lot more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get with uh, you'll get started with two hundred dollars in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first five dollar bet. It's at FanDuel.com. I told you last week that the Broncos were going to cover the minus two against the Saints. We got more Thursday night football Vikings at Rams. I like Minnesota minus three and I like the over at forty eight and a half. You can do bets like that right there at FanDuel. Go to FanDuel.com. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, as we continue with the uh, Lockdown Big Ten squad, let's see who we have here. Okay, all right. We got uh, Zach from Lockdown Nittany Lions, and uh, we lost a few people as well. All right, so we're good. Now we can have a calm conversation. With Spencer's gone, all that kind of stuff. Let's, <laughs> Time to roast him. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Since Zach, yeah, if you want to roast him, go ahead. Uh, but since I got Zach here from uh, Lockdown Nittany Lions, who's been very patient with us throughout all this, uh, let's talk about what you thought about, uh, you know, Penn State took a, took a week off. They got to buy a game at Camp Randall. Now, now to get back into it here, uh, still an unblemished record. I think the bye week's very beneficial for them. They are this this is a team across the board that has a new OC and a new DC. So you still have to get used to the new system. You have to get used to trying to fit all the puzzle pieces together. So the fact that Penn State has gotten to this point unscathed they're six and oh and then they have the bye week to not only get healthy but to kind of fine tune the little things i still think that better days are ahead for penn state both on offense and on defense well i really liked how they improved it my my observation from um penn state was the improvement of the defense week in and week out a lot different from the bowling green game to say their last couple of games where it seems like the later the games got the tighter the defense got would you agree with that assessment i mean they're really dialing it in i thought i mean that makes sense right these are two veteran coordinators and that's and that's just not that's just not relegated to a tom allen either andy kotelnicki only had six points that offense only scored six points in the first half against usc but yes so that so to say that Tom Allen has made second half adjustments, that's honestly, that shouldn't be not unexpected. That should be expected because that's a veteran coach. That's a veteran head coach now turned defensive coordinator and players that are still getting used to the system and finding the right role. Okay, hey, we got to tweak this. We got to change this. We got to move him down in the box. We got to take him and put him in back off coverage, right? It's the little things that aren't going to show up immediately, but they pay dividends. And the only way you're going to find out those things is by actually playing games you can only learn so much about yourself in practice jacob um curtis rourke's getting heisman talk and then he breaks his thumb or whatever that was thumbnail whatever so surgery gonna be out this week but because of the surgery might be back as soon as next week against michigan state what exactly happened there and how dire is the situation is it just a one game uh absence for indiana's quarterback well, that's what's interesting is they said he's out indefinitely. They said he's out for at least a week. Then he gets surgery to or on, on Monday, right? I think it was yeah. early in the week he got surgery. And then they're like, oh, yeah, he's probably back next week for Michigan State. And it's like, who the heck comes back after surgery for a week, even if it is on your thumb? So I don't really know. The way that I look at it, though, is Taven Jackson played a really good second half against Nebraska when the game was basically out of reach anyway, had two yeah. touchdowns, no turnovers was really, really effective moving the football. And so the way that I look at it is this, no disrespect to Washington or Michigan state, since Matt's not here to defend himself. 
if you don't have to bring back Curtis work in these two games, don't. I mean, if he's just 100% healthy, ready to go, the thumb is completely fine, then, yeah, you want to bring him back because he's playing at a really high level. But if you don't need him, wait until Michigan comes to Bloomington and then bring him back, which is yeah. the biggest game of the year to that point. Of course, Ohio State's coming up down the stretch. So a really weird situation, but Coach Signetti said he's got full confidence in Taven Jackson. I do too. And uh, with it being Washington, I think we're okay. Uh, okay. Roman, and he answered Roman. all of that? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, th this, is, this is what happens when Indiana is relevant for what? First time in decade plus? Let's let, let's call it that. I have oh, Indiana fans come on. In my... Come on. Because right. <laughs> <laughs> first of all, I, I wore my, my little Sebastian shirt to pay homage to Indiana and try to deflect and be nice to Jacob. If there are any Parks and Rec fans out there. But. I, I mean, I just come in and I'm, and I'm taking these shots when Washington was in the national championship last year. That still means something to me. But on, on top of that, Jacob, you got to remember, this is still the number nine total defense in, in the nation. Number one passing defense in the country. And I'm really interested to see that that matchup is going to look like in particular, where yeah. if it still if it were Curtis work, I think it would have been even more fun. Honestly, Th this is going to be a better game than people think, especially with Washington having the bye week and getting that defense right, getting a couple guys back healthy. The one thing that I'm really going to watch even more than the secondary is what this pass rush is going to look like against Indiana's offensive line, which has certainly been more than solid. But don't sleep on Washington's pass rush either. Okay. Um, while we were talking with Jacob about the injury of the Indiana quarterback, Jay, it reminded me, you said something in the first segment that uh, Ohio State used the bye week to get healthy and whatnot. Were any of those injuries significant or anything we might not have heard about that uh, we can elaborate on a little bit? One of them was significant. Ryan Day mentioned earlier this week that starting left tackle Josh Simmons is out for the year. He hurt his knee in that game against Oregon. There's also rumors that Lathan Ransom starting safety for the Buckeyes. He might be injured, but Ryan Day wouldn't touch on that at all. He just had all the guys that are kind of banged up. They're all day to day. Quinshawn Junkins had a procedure on his hand. He is believed to not. He's the thought is he's not going to miss any time. So, like, those are just three guys right there and Simmons and Ransom and Junkins. Like, two, like, two of them are expected to play the rest of the year. Not sure if Ransom will, will miss time. It's weird, man, because Ohio State's been hit with the injury bug numerous times throughout Ryan Day's tenure. But then right now, in this part of the year, it's left tackle, running back, safety, and nobody knows what else is going on. It could be two or three other guys that are banged up as well. Get healthy. Like, that's my only thing that I'm thinking about right now is Ohio State take time to get healthy. If you got to pull your guys early against Nebraska this weekend to keep them healthy, do it. Because mm -hmm. if not, they might not be healthy down the road. And if Indiana plays dirty, that might be the only way they beat Ohio State in two weeks. <laughs> oh, 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 whatever. I had to, Jacob. Whatever. I can't be nice to you right now. I that's know. your only comeback? You're scared. You're worried. You're worried. I get it. I get it, man. Wow, taking shots at Indiana three weeks in advance. That's, uh, <laughs> it's that's weird. respect. It's weird. They're here. It's weird. They've, They've arrived. They have arrived. They have arrived. Um, Zach Anderson, let me ask you um, – from your perspective, I want to ask you about your rival with the Trojans because nobody's talked about them yet. But they, the USC Trojans, uh, as you see it, cookie cutter games, five Big Ten games, four of them they've lost, all four they've had the lead, all four they've blown the lead and lost by a score. What's your assessment with what's going on? They're kind of getting kicked in the teeth with Big Ten play. Yeah, they've just been blowing leads. Hey, you know, it, they should have lost the LSU game. They had a big deficit against Wisconsin. They could have it much worse. Or if you put it on the flip side, they could have it much better. And now I guess evened out. They're three and four. Um, from the other side of town, I'm absolutely loving it, you know. But most importantly, I just think it's going to take more than a year for the defense to, to really grab a hold of what Danton Lynch trying to do. I know they try to get stronger, to get physical, get faster. They even stole some of UCLA's uh, safeties and starting uh, DBs, but whatever they've done, it just hasn't worked. And you know, at what point do you start questioning is Lincoln Riley, the right man for the job, right? Thank like, you. like what, what are you doing? They, you know, you go from one to the other and yes, they had the dramatic fun year with Caleb Williams, but last year, they sucked, honestly. Yeah. Like they, they're getting run all over. This year, they are Chelsea, underwhelming. Chelsea. And it's just, oh my goodness. Like, can they get better? I, I don't know. Yeah, I heard the B word flashed around this week buyout for Lincoln oh, Rally, somewhere in the yeah. $60 to $80 million range. Somebody's oh, going to stroke a check, right? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> 
Crap, you got that, you got that in the bank, whoever, don't whoever you? knew that losing your job would be such a good thing. Yeah, getting paid yeah, to not nice. work, man. It's got to be the best profession out there. It's uh, just get the job. They can fire mm-hmm. you, you know, fire me before Thanksgiving so I can have a holiday, you know, whatever. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, you mentioned Ed Ogeron. I haven't seen him do anything at all since they let him go a couple and years he's ago. He's on a beach somewhere with a with a coconut drink. <laughs> yeah. With a championship ring, too. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and a few yeah. million dollars in the bank. It's all good. All right, I want to go round robin in a minute when we come back and uh, take a look at some other key games coming up here. Our final thoughts on week nine as we continue here in just a minute on the Lockdown Big Ten Squad Podcast. I want to tell you about Prize Picks Daily Fantasy. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money, uh, sports action. This is a lot of fun with over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings. Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You can just pick more or less with some stats on at least two players for your shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on prize picks. That's right. You can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. Uh, You can sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play $5 or more. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. You can think of grouping players like Justin Jefferson, more than 83 and a half yards with Jared Goff, more than one and a half touchdown passes and put them all together and see uh, your winnings come in. It is with prize picks. Download the app today. Use the code lockdown college to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Download the app today and use the code locked on college to get fifty dollars instantly when you play your first five dollar lineup prize picks run your game all right as we continue with uh locked on big 10 squad podcast here going into week nine we still have uh two zacks and a jacob here we're good to go this is the uh, a team this, this is the closer this is yeah, the closer this these, is are, nice. these are my guys <laughs> two <laughs> basketballs cool. and zach basketball yay nay and and, and happy Which valor one? this year okay good i'm glad you spent <laughs> actually yes if we're uh, i'm i'm very excited for okay. where this basketball okay. team is headed they they should be relevant they should be competitive there's if they miss the tournament i'd be surprised yeah, I'm, I'm angry, cool. by the way. The UCLA just lost to San Diego State in a closed door scrimmage, and they apparently were missing like four players. San Diego State was. So oh. apparently I'm all out of the Bruins. That, that's Yikes. that's exaggeration. Sorry. But oh, no. the last two days, including today, UCLA basketball has crushed my soul. Football, my, let's go. My apology. Football, let's go. Let's go. All right, let me bounce you guys around a Big Ten a little bit. By the way, does anybody think uh, Oregon, who has won three uh, games against ranked teams, can go in there and give Oregon a fight. Uh, Zach Anderson up top. We'll start with you. We'll go around. I believe Illinois will, you know, it'll be interesting, right? That's the team that's been slipped on. They've done some, you know, some interesting games. They didn't really give Penn State too much of a, of a big fight earlier in the year. I'm not sure. If Oregon falls asleep, Maybe after playing Purdue, but I, yeah, I'm not entirely sure. I don't know where I fall on the Illinois front. All right. Other Zach, how about you? Oh, I hate that. Other Zach. No, I, I, know, I, know, what you, I, I know what you mean. Um, but I, I think – so I think Illinois is punching above its weight class here. I, I look at Oregon and this this being a road trip for Illinois, right? The cross country stuff still matters. I know they don't have to go coast to coast, but that that still does matter. Flying all the way out to Eugene, I'm going to take the Ducks here. I do th- I do think they cover. Uh, it it's uh, Oregon. Oregon is just I think a little bit too much here for Illinois. I mean, Penn State was a four, it was a 17 point favorite for a reason. They ended up winning by 14. Oregon's a 21 point favorite. I just don't, I, I will, will give Illinois credit. They're well coached, they're disciplined. Everybody's bought in. This is a veteran team, but they certainly have, I mean, they do have some issues that we're finding out like, hey, Nebraska's not as good. They went to overtime and won by a point against Purdue. Like, yeah, that that's really that's concerning awesome. here. I th- I don't think the Ducks should have any issues. Jacob, I just find it really hard in conference play. I don't care if it's Big Ten, SEC, Big Twelve to take a team 
to beat another team by 21 points. Three touchdowns is a lot. And this isn't Oregon and Purdue. This is Oregon and Illinois. I mean, these are still two ranked teams. And I'm not saying Oregon can't win, but our friends at FanDuel, depending on when you look at it, 21, 21 and a half. If you can get the hook, I say take it. Oregon's going to win this game, and they'll win it going away. I just can't pick a team to win by 21 points until it just actually happens. That's just a lot of points for me, guys. Yeah. If uh, Illinois wears the uniforms, they're going to win. If they if they come out of nowhere and just wear those uniforms, pick yeah. one. Another, yeah. another two-year under-construction uniform. <laughs> yeah. Why not? <laughs> they should keep those their permanent, uh, permanent uniforms. All right, Jacob, we'll start with you on this one. Last game I want to talk about, Michigan State-Michigan. This is a pretty good rivalry. It's Michigan State's biggest game, not Michigan's biggest game. The whole little brother thing. Um, I know Michigan State finally got a they got a win against uh, Iowa. They've uh, they've won on the road at Maryland. They've been very inconsistent. Michigan is a mess right now. Is this is this a week where is this a year where Michigan State could go into Michigan and get the win this year? What's so crazy is if for any we say this as a bad term, but for any casual college football fan, if you were to just look at the logos and just, you know, listen to what's been happening in college football, would you guess that these two teams have the same record that they're both no. four and three? Like yeah. that's what is so shocking to me is Michigan. Yes, they started as a top 10 team. I think we can all agree we knew they weren't, but until you lose, right, you have the respect. And they've just slowly kind of worked their way down. And Michigan State has somehow survived. And from an Indiana perspective, we get Michigan State next week. We have Michigan after that. So I'm really fascinated by this game. I think Michigan's just a little bit more physical, a little bit better on the ground, a little bit better in the trenches. Could be so such an ugly game that it turns out being good. I'll take Michigan, but I don't feel comfortable with, what is it, three and a half, four points, depending on uh, when you look at FanDuel. So I'll take Michigan, but very, very intrigued with this matchup. Is it three or four, or is it three or four starting quarterbacks? They're all over the place. Zach Zico, how do you see that game going? I think Michigan State's peaking at the right time, and I think Michigan's regressing at the wrong time. I, I always we're at the second half of the season now. So having a new coach, having a new quarterback, freshman wide receivers that are taking over for, for Michigan State with all the potential in the world, like they need time to develop the same argument that I've made for Penn State. Like you need to get adjusted to a new system. I mean, that's that's a completely brand new system. Mel Tucker's gone. Jonathan Smith is a really good coach. One of the best that couldn't have been a better hire for Sparty. And I just don't everybody's looking at Michigan as as the defending national champion. They're not playing like that. They don't have the same talent level. They don't have any of this other than Sharon Moore and a couple of assistants, right? The bulk of their program is gone because Jim Harbaugh ran off to the NFL. Yeah. I, I, I honestly like, I think Michigan might be looking forward at like, hey, we can revitalize our season here with a win over potential, probably, you know, most likely number one, Oregon. We just agreed that Illinois is not going to beat that team. So Michigan has Oregon on the horizon at home. I wonder how much they're looking at this game as the classic rivalry here. And this is where, again, Michigan State showed me a lot by beating up on an Iowa team that has maybe not the same type of defense that Michigan. I will argue that Michigan has a top five defense. The offense just doesn't play complimentary football but you look at Iowa that has the same th same thing great defense but the offense doesn't bail them out Michigan State beat them by double digits I'm not saying they beat Michigan by double digits but this is personal for Jonathan Smith to kind of establish himself as that head coach and someone to be taken seriously in the Big Ten and this rivalry give me the Spartans to win Zach Anderson Yaksimer Yaksimer final word here is Michigan in trouble uh, I think so. You know, the Sparty, they just handle the physical team that likes to run the football in Iowa. Yeah. As Zach just said, two Zach's probably going the same way. <laughs> if Sparty avoids the turnover, if they can, if their quarterback doesn't turn it over, play like a young guy in his first full season of starting, then I think Michigan State can absolutely win this game. Michigan just continues to crumble. We know what they're going to do. You know, Tuttle, he's probably as old as I am at this point playing quarterback. <laughs> and it, it only got 200 yards, much better than what they've done. But still, Michigan State just saw this last week, right? Different form, different uniform, different environment, different rival in the Big Ten. But if they can play a clean football game, I would like Sparty to pull this one off, something we didn't even think was possible a few weeks ago. 
I want to thank you guys. Great job as always to tell our audience, follow and subscribe to all these guys. They do a fantastic job each and every day. And the guys that were on earlier as well, follow and subscribe your favorite big 10 team. We'll be covering your favorite team every day throughout the season. And don't forget, I got you covered with the entire conference with locked on big 10 every day, part of the lockdown podcast network, your team every day. Thanks for checking out the squad.